Hello guys, in today's video, we're going to guide you through how to do VFD control wiring with a self-lock push button switch to run the motor in forward direction. And we'll also learn the basic VFD programming, so let's dive right in. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the equipment we'll be using. We have a motor, a variable frequency drive, model GK3000 upgraded, a self-locking push button in the switch control box, and necessary wiring. Make sure you have these components ready before proceeding. By the way, all these components are available on ATO.com. Now let's start with the wiring process. Begin by connecting the power source to the variable frequency drive. You can see on this VFD, two terminals are provided above here, L and N. Connect these terminals to your power supply as the circuit diagram shows. Then let's move on to the motor connection. On the three output terminals, U, V and W of the VFD, the power cable of the motor is to be connected. Double check the connections to ensure they are secure and follow the provided wiring diagram. So the power and motor connections for our VFD are only this much. Following that, we are going to connect the self-lock switch. As you can see, our push button is contained in the switch control box. So to wire it up, we need to undo these screws and take the switch out. Take our stripped wires and at normally open contacts of the push button, we connect a yellow and a white wire to the either end. Simply insert wires into the terminals and secure them in place. In this example, we do not need to use the adjacent emergency stop button. Once complete, use the connection like this. Ensure the connection is secure and tight. After that, we'll use our screwdriver once again and do the screws up, closing the switch box. This switch box has knockouts on the two opposite ends for easy wiring access. So take these wires from the knockout and connect them to the VFD. As the given picture shows, when we select 1 in P3.14, the motor will start running forward only when K1 is closed. Thus, the connection can only be made from the X1 terminal to the COM terminal on the control board of VFD. Therefore, to set up the control inputs, the only thing you have to do is connect one end of terminal of the push button to the terminal X1 on the VFD and the other terminal to the common input. Now that the control wiring is complete, we have to tell this VFD we want to do controlling by the self-lock switch instead of operating through this control panel. To do this, we have to go to programming, press the menu button, then you can see P0 is showing here. Go into this P0 programming, and here you have to select P0.01. In 01 programming, you gotta select the main frequency source. If you select one here, then in this condition, you can control the VFD output frequency using the up and down keys. More importantly, it allows the VFD to hold the instant output value in case of power disconnection. Then let's move on to P03, where we'll do the command source selection which is addressed from where you want to control the VFD. If you select 0 here, then the VFD will be operated through the control panel. If you select 1 here, then you can operate the VFD through these control terminals. If you select 2 here, then you can control VFD by communication. For now, we need to operate our VFD through control terminals, so we'll select 1. On selecting, press enter button and leave the programming. After this, we have to do programming for the forward direction. For this, we need to select P3. And here, we have to select P3.00. On selecting that, press Enter button. Here, you'll find different types of programming for our X1 digital input. For the motor to run in forward direction, we need to select one. That way, we assign the forward input to the self-locking push button, save this programming, and leave it. To control VFD through control terminals, we have to do one more programming, in which we have to show we're controlling through 2 wire control mode 2. For this, select P3.14 and enter into this. If we want to use 2 wire control mode 2, select 1. Upon selecting 1, press enter to save it and leave the programming. Once you've done this much programming, your VFD can be controlled by self-lock switch. And to address the speed, simply use the potentiometer on the front panel to adjust the output frequency to regulate the motor speed. Now if we press down the push button, you can see here the motor is running in forward direction. If we rotate this to raise the frequency, then you can see the value is increased and the motor can run at a top frequency of 50 Hz. Ok, let's lower the value. And run this at like 26 Hz. Now we press the switch again. The motor stops as commanded by the VFD. While the VFD holds the last output frequency we set once the power is removed. This feature ensures that your settings are preserved, allowing for seamless operation once the power is restored. 
And there you have it. By following these steps, you have successfully configured a soft lock push button in the VFD to control the forward running and stopping of a motor while enjoying the flexibility of speed adjustment without worrying about any power failure. So guys, through this video, we've learned how to use 2 wide control mode 2 to operate the VFD for forward motor control. And if you want to learn how to run motor in reverse direction, we've already made a video on this, and you can check it out through the link provided in the description below, or just by clicking on the link here to watch the video. If you're interested in exploring a wide range of VFDs, motors, push button switches, and other industrial automation solutions, be sure to visit ADL.com. If you like this video, give a like and subscribe for more industrial automation tutorials and solutions. Thanks for watching. See you in next videos.